CCNA certification or degree, which option is best for you? This is one of the most debated questions in the IT industry. Both have their advantages and disadvantages. And in this video, I'm going to be covering the key factors that will help you make that decision. So be sure to stick around until the end. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Tanai. My goal for this channel is to be a resource for those that are starting their journey in the network industry through tutorials, course reviews, tips and guides, just like this one. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. This debate has been raging for a while. Some say certifications are the way forward and some are in favor of degrees. Now I want to focus on context because we are all at different stages of our careers. And there's no one size fits all when it comes to this question. Let's begin. Now, most people are worried about costs. And according to Forbes, the average student debt in the US is $42,000. Now, if you attend one of the Ivy League colleges, that cost can go above 80,000. Degrees cost more than CCNA or certifications. Depending on whether you pursue self-study or boot camp, CCNA is going to cost you between $600 to $3,000, and that's including exam fees. So there is a huge difference in cost, and it is important for you to understand what are the outcomes that you want to achieve from either course. Because spending money on a degree will not be the best investment if you could achieve the same outcomes with CCNA. What do I mean? I mean, if you're looking at becoming a network administrator, for an example, then spending four years doing a bachelor's degree might not be the best idea. However, if you are aspiring for that PhD status, then it's going to be degree all the way. So it's all about context. Now, we need to learn and understand the objective of each course. A degree is an academic qualification. It focuses on theoretical knowledge and ability to apply that knowledge in a variety of contexts. In simple terms, degrees teach you broad content. CCNA on the other end is considered a professional qualification and its focus is on practical rather than theoretical knowledge. According to Cisco, you should be able to install, configure and troubleshoot medium-sized routed and switched networks upon completion of your CCNA. Now, if you look at that statement, the focus is on hands-on skills rather than theoretical knowledge. Now, if you want to learn the theory, then degree is your option. But if you're looking for hands-on skills, then certifications are your solution. Understanding this difference is important in you being able to attain the outcomes that you want from the respective courses. Now, what is the point of education without employment? I mean, most small to medium-sized companies uh, prefer CCNA over degrees. Since CCNA is focused on practical knowledge on Cisco infrastructure that is being used in the industry, uh, something not usually covered on a degree program, expectation is that the CCNA graduate should be more confident than their degree counterpart. Most universities have started integrating professional certifications into their degree programs to close this gap. This means that you can graduate with both. My degree covered AWS and other professional certifications such as CCNA, CCNP and VMware as part of the degree. I would recommend anyone thinking about pursuing a degree in 2020 to consider such a program. Students from the institute where I did my degree were in demand. Companies would come every year to recruit students in their final year because they were confident of the quality that they'll get. I'll put links in the description below for those who are interested in finding out. Governments and big organizations tend to prefer degrees. In Africa, almost all companies love degrees. It doesn't matter whether you are a receptionist, preference is given to someone with a degree. So different parts of the world have their own preferences. It is important for you to understand the expectations in your area so that you can align yourself accordingly. I started my career by doing certifications such as A+, Network+, because doing a degree wasn't appealing. I did not get the logic on why I should spend the first year 
doing subjects that have no relevance to IT, such as philosophy and psychology 101. You know the ones that I'm talking about. I knew degrees were not preferred. I knew degrees were preferred over certifications. But I also knew that one day I was going to play on a global scale where my certifications will always have value. So remember, context is important in making such decisions. You need to understand where you stand. Question, which one do you have, CCNA or degree? Please put in the comments below. We now live in a global environment and sometimes due to various circumstances, one might choose to relocate to another country. Now, a lot of countries have skill-based programs whereby they grant you residency based on your skills and contribution to the economy. Now, most countries prefer university degrees as evidence of skills rather than certifications. Australia recognizes CCNP and MCSE for skills migration, but I'm also sure if other countries do the same. So if you're considering migrating in the future, degrees don't expire. So that 1998 bachelor's in computer science that you learned using MS-DOS, QBasic and COBOL is still relevant. Certification on the other hand, because they're constantly evolving, you have to recertify every three years. I know it is frustrating, but I've also noticed that every time I reset my Cisco exams, I always learn something that was not covered in the previous syllabus. I'm sure that 1998 degree, almost 90% of the content is no longer relevant in 2020. If you're getting value from this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. Now testing the market. Some people haven't figured out what career they want to pursue. And certifications allow you to dip your feet into networking. If you're not interested, you can easily move on to something else. This is not the same with degrees. Most people will tend to realize, and by the time they realize that the degree is not for them, it's too late. And you can't walk away with half a degree. So most people just have to stick it up until the end. That's why you've noticed that most of the brilliant people in IT never had IT as their first degrees. Global relevance. Not all degrees are equal. That degree from Harvard University and the one from St. Boniface, you know the dodgy online universities, they're not the same. I mean, some countries don't even recognize those degrees altogether. So your four years basically have gone to waste. The beauty of certifications is that there is one standard across the globe. It doesn't matter whether you got certified in Timbuktu or in New York. The certification is globally recognized. Certifications are not without fault. You have read articles or videos of people who passed CCNA in one week of study with zero experience. There's a lot of skepticism on the market when you present your CCNA because of the dumps. And also there's no standard to measure uh, the time acquired to gain your IT certification. Someone might take six months. The next person might take a month. So degrees are more credible or trusted in this particular area. Professional certifications have come a long way and are now more formally recognized. Many people are building careers from CCNA, AWS and Microsoft certifications with zero college or university education. Gone are the days when you needed an IT degree for you to join the IT industry. So for those who cannot afford university or do not want to incur the debt associated, you can get your certification and be financially free. University is not for everyone and neither is everyone meant to go to university. So as you can see, there is no right or wrong answer when it comes to degree or CCNA. Both present advantages and disadvantages and sometimes you need to contextualize. This is like buying a car. There are so many options and factors that you need to consider. If you're staying on a farm, and you have debt roads, buying a Ferrari might not be the best option for you. So you need to evaluate and look at the two options and ask yourself, where do you see yourself in the next two years or what is it that you want to achieve? And pick an option that helps you achieve that objective. Thank you for viewing and I'll see you in the next one.